All right, so this is going to be a quick video on physical properties of diastereomers as well as enantiomers. So um, the physical properties for enantiomers are going to be different for diastereomers. Now we have compounds A, B, and C labeled below. We've seen these before. This is tartaric acid. And um, we do need to know that A, B, and C have a specific relationship that's... Um, going to be classified as A and B are enantiomers of one another and A and B are diastereomers to C, uh, of C. And so we've got our table below. We have A, B, and C labeled for our physical properties as well as the A plus B, which is a one-to-one -one ratio, which represents a racemic mixture. We'll notice that A and B have similar, same properties. Um, C has different properties and sometimes the racemic mixture does as well. A and B have the same melting point because they are enantiomers. They're just, they function the same way, typically, uh, just kind of like our hands do, right? They're enantiomers of one another. C, on the other hand, is a diastereomer of A and B, right? And so the properties of C are going to be different than that of A and B. You can think of it as if you had two your two chiral hands sticking forward, and then if you change the configuration of one of those, diastereomer, right? And you put one hand behind your back, now you can't really hold on to a rope in the same way you could before, so um, that's kind of like how I like to think of it. Um, the function of that molecule is interacting with kind of space in general in a different way. The melting point of the racemic mixture is 206, totally different. Solubilities are all the same except for the diastereomer. Uh, rotation, optical rotation is equal and opposite magnitude for the enantiomers and zero for the, the racemic mixture as well as the diastereomer. Now this, in this case it's zero because it's a meso compound and has symmetry. Um, and then since the A has a positive 13, that's dextrorotatory, D, negative 13 is levorotatory, that's L, and then not no designation for the C. Now the RS configuration is RRSS as well as RS uh, for the diastereomer. And that is because we only changed one of the uh, configurations of the compound A to get our diastereomer. Now if we did that for the other one, it was actually just, since it is a meso compound, we don't have a, a fourth stereoisomer. So again, to summarize, diastereomers have different properties, okay? And enantiomers have the same properties, but racemic mixtures may or may not have the same properties. And then um, we also want to make note that chiral substances will interact with chi other chiral substances in a different manner as well. So that's important to think about. Now, <clears throat> real quick, the chemical properties of chiral drugs. For, if you look at, if you Google the structure of any drug, not any drug, but most drugs, you'll notice that they, a lot of them are chiral substances. Now, we're not gonna go into too much detail, really, other than the fact that we already probably know that amino acids, uh, we have uh, chir our chiral substances, we have L and D amino acids and our bodies only function with L amino acids and so that is a specific um, enantiomer and ibuprofen for example is an anti-inflammatory drug if it's the S configuration but if it's the R configuration ibuprofen is completely inactive and doesn't really help with anti-inflammatory effects um, so Enantiomers have the same physical properties, but interact with other chiral substances in a different way, right? As I said before. And so this is seen in our body in a variety of different ways. So it could be good or bad or just neutral, right? So uh, meaning that the S configuration for ibuprofen works, so that's good, but the R configuration doesn't. That's not necessarily bad, but it's more like neutral. We could have a case where we have, for example, let's look at this compound right here. It's an anti-inflammatory drug, naproxen. And this is the S configuration. 
Now, if we were to have, I'm going to get lazy here and just copy and paste this, change that name up real quick. <sighs> we want to change it to the R configuration. So all we have to do is change that chiral center from a dash to a wedge. That R naproxen is actually a liver toxin, which is bad, right? So that's one of the scenarios where we have a bad enantiomer. It's really important to get that nice and pure substance before we put that into our body. Another super common example, which I've mentioned in a previous lecture, is thalidomide. So thalidomide was uh, given to pregnant women to for nausea, right? You get morning sickness, and um, it's terrible, and it could sometimes be debilitating. And so you take the thalidomide, thinking it's good for nausea, but the other enantiomer, because it wasn't, it was a racemic mixture that they were eating. Or consuming the other enantiomer was actually a teratogen so it harmed the development of the growing fetus and so super unfortunate um, but and we definitely learned the hard way on that one for sure uh, some other methods not methods but some other ways that we see how our bodies interact with uh, enantiomers in a different manner are um, this particular ketone compound so we have s carbone uh it's got it's carbone with the uh, s configuration and we also have the r carbone the r configuration now <clears throat> the our olfactory bulbs the our sensors in our nose basically um they're part of they're it's all made of like proteins and stuff right so they're i mean they're gonna have some chiral centers and uh we smell the S carbone as caraway seeds and we smell the R carbone as spearmint leaves, which is like totally different, right? And so um, this is one of my favorite kind of aspects of chirality because it's it's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but um, it's just, it's pretty neat. We smell things differently based on their three-dimensional orientation. That's crazy. All right, now the celery ketone, I would definitely count, categorize this as bad. That R configuration smells like celery, and that S configuration smells like licorice, but not that good stuff that LeBron be, be eating on the, during the middle of the game to get that carb load. It's that stuff that makes you make this face. Like, like uh, is this Anna or Elsa? I don't know. Kristen Bell. But uh, it's black licorice smell, right? So that's not necessarily as fun or delicious. It's not for everybody. Definitely not for me. And that's pretty much it for... Um, what is this? Physical and chemical properties. <laughs> um, again, chiral drugs are a huge thing. It's really fun to look at the structures and see how they mimic natural neurotransmitters, for example, like dopamine or serotonin or things like that. Um, and those are all going to be chiral substances. And uh, one last thing I didn't mention is like meth for example well, one in antimer of meth is the extremely terrible drug that is abused all around the world and then the other enantiomer is actually not bad at all it has maybe minimal effects at best and can be or used to be able to be found in like vix vapo rub so a little fun fact for you today instead of that joke um hopefully you had fun with the content though let me know if you have any questions